What am I trying to say? For 31 years plus, from 1976 to 1994, Satan had a grip over my life. And may I tell you this? Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 33. He says, Satan will never let his captives go. That is why, you see, we keep moving from one to another. You want to take a harder drug. You want to do another thing. Because he sees the same Satan. And one thing again is that, see, he was giving me the opportunity. I don't understand. Because all the promotion, we are coming with good money. And so with the good money, we were able to do all the vices. I can imagine if I, all that money, if I would used it for the gospel at that time. Of course, God is not interested in unrighteous mammon anyway. Welcome again to Impact. Uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting day and it's an exciting time and the subject that we're contemplating also is quite exciting. Exciting not because of, it, um, uh, of itself, but because of the, the way God turns it around and makes what looks like uh, nonsense, begins to make sense. And uh, we get the, the jigsaw puzzle begins to fit together as we look at uh, the subject of sickness and disease. Um, we started last week, we'll continue this week. And I'll be looking at some aspects of it in a way and manner that I believe will bless you, help you, and use you to encourage other people who might be going through a crisis in their lives. Stand by, I'll be right back. So I now preach to them. I now told them the reason why I'm following this Jesus. And that's what I want to just share with you. I told them, I said, number one, everything that they said about this Jesus, when it now came, everything he said from his mouth all came to pass. I now quoted where he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Money and it also go where to the rebel, but those one the baile. Money keta. What one on pada law, on fellow tile de wa, tomba de pari on bo a koa money I me fair one be. Money to the co purori. He has never lied. Everything he said was the truth. Why won't I believe this one? So I'm waiting for him to come. I'm waiting. He didn't tell me if intelligence when he didn't tell me if intelligence when he so I kept saying that. He didn't tell me if intelligence when he when he tell him for a dua. I pray for the family, pray for the child, and I said I want imams. Ah, when they pass, I bad dua for no. I prayed for them. All of them followed me to my car, and we are dropping money because they know I won't collect it. They were dropping the money inside the car. Pastor Efireko, Pastor Efireko, I drove the car to the filling station. I told the filling station, go 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 to one there, go fill him. Hallelujah. Listen. Number one thing you need to do when you come into this kingdom, make up your mind to be a doer of the word. James chapter 1 verse 22. 
He said, if you're only just a hearer, you are deceiving yourself. Help me ask your neighbor, are you deceiving yourself? Help me tell another person, if you are deceiving yourself, then from today, stop deceiving yourself. Because in verse 25, he said, it is only the doers that are blessed. Did you see that? So I made up my mind. I drew something that I use personally. I call it Gorebedo. Maybe you remember. If you remember anything, remember Gorebedo. Gorebedo is G-O-R-E-B-E-D-O. Gorebedo. It's in my head. What is go? Get the word of God. Re, receive the word of God into your heart. Believe the word of God, that is bear, and do it. So that's my slogan. Go Rebedo. I get the word of God, I receive it into my heart, I believe it without questioning, and then I do it. I always do the word of God. So when I just say go Rebedo, I, I already know what to do. Don't question the word of God, just do it. Number two thing, stop running up and down. I used to tell our members, where you are going, I want to go to this church, I want to go to this, what, are they having another Holy Ghost? The problem is you. The problem is not with God. So I learned that, so I stayed. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26. He said, Those, God gave some people the work of running up and down. That's not our own work. Help me tell you, say, that's not your work. He said to the sinner, other version will say to a wicked man, he gives the job of traveling. He gives the work of going up and down. Up and down to do what? He said to gather wealth. And when they have gathered the wealth, he said, I, God, I will come and take it. And then I will give it to the one that pleases me. So I found out from the scripture that all I need to do is just learn how to please him. Please him, Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's way pleases the Lord. When a man's way pleases the Lord. When the Lord was going to expand this scripture to me, he now explained that word evil. In some version you will see a comma. He said, when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes everything to be okay then even your enemies to be at peace. So God has a job to make everything okay. That's why he said in Psalm 23, I will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. So we are not called to be afraid of the enemy. All we are called to do is to respect and to fear God. Once you are respecting and fearing God, he will put the enemy at bay. Amen? Amen. So I got that. Then I also saw it from the scripture, Psalm 37, verse 4. I said, this is the secret to getting every blessing I want. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That is what I do in Ring Road. I just make up my mind. Every opportunity, how do I delight? I need to worship. I need to pray. I need to trust. I need to give. I just do everything to continue to show that I delight myself. And one of the ways to delight yourself is in service. Let me tell your neighbor, service. service. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 47. He said, when you serve the Lord, you are doing so for the abundance of all things. I don't know whether you have seen the scripture like that. For the abundance of all things. What is everybody looking for? Abundance of all things. He says, serve the Lord. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things. For the abundance of all things. So that's the secret. Learn to serve the Lord. Serve him whether you like it or not. Serve him when it's convenient. Serve him when it's not convenient. Just be there. He will make it up for you. I say he will make it up for you. Yeah. See, no pastor said I should share how I met my wife. Listen, these are the things that I've been doing. At a point, I told God, I said, now, I don't even have money. Two, I don't even have a job. So how do I even go and tell any girl that I love you? So I said, Lord, I'm not going to tell anybody that I love you. You give me a wife like, I, I, I think you are the one that took a decision for Adam. Adam was sitting there, you said it's not good for him to be alone. 
So I said, God, me too, it's not good for me to be alone. I'm already 36, so do something. I'm telling you. So the following day, I wanted to read the scripture. I just saw myself in Job chapter 42. And then I saw it there. Job had seven boys and three girls. And they were the wisest and the, the, the how did he even put it? He said they were the wisest and the fairest. I like yellow girls. So he said they were the fairest. So I just put my hand there. But I, you know something? I kept saying something. He said in the land of the east. In the, I think it's in Job 42.10. In the land of the east. So I just kept saying, you know, sometimes you pray some prayer, you don't even understand what you are saying. I say, give me a wife like the daughters of Job in the land of the east. In the land of the east. I don't know whether it's from Igbo land. <laughs> Listen, I prayed that prayer in 1996. That was the year she returned to Nigeria. Apparently, the mother died, and so she had to relocate back to Nigeria. The same year. We never met. But God told me, he said, I have already answered. By this shall you know her. This, this, this. And she will come. She will come. So I wrote it down. And anytime they are praying for those who are looking for the fruit, I mean, wife, I never come out. Because I believe it was already settled with God. And one day, she just came in to church. With another half cast, I think, or maybe it was her sister, I can't remember. But I remember that day as I was just praying, God said, Stop. He said, Look back. I did. <laughs> he said, That's your wife. Ah. Now, hear this one. This is where ushers, you need to help us. That day, when God said, That is your wife, the only place where I can get her data is it not in that form they feel? So I was looking out to see which usher will go to her and take the details. I didn't hear what the preacher preached that day, sir. <laughs> All my mind was, who will go to her? So, uh, service continued. No usher. They took offering. They closed the meeting. She was going out. Ah, Bubara, me then, boom. Morning. Say, say, nobody will go to her. How will I get the, how will I even know, know her name or even? I was just thinking. Now, hear this. I need to say this here. I was a victim. There used to be a woman in our church those days. Anytime worship is going on, she would just come and lie down in the front of the church. She would lie down like this. But she had two very big buttocks. So the buttocks would just do poop like this. So me, I used to get angry. That since you know that this is how you are staying at the back. It's like you are a distraction. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me now. It's okay. The thing is that she's not worshipping you. She's worshipping God. So God liked what he was seeing. But here am I, I was getting disturbed. I got disturbed to the point that I wasn't talking to her. Can you imagine that? Many of you are here too now, you are not talking to some people in church. You don't know that that person you are not talking to might be the key to your, your miracle. On that day, this woman that I wasn't talking to, She's the one that I just saw run out and put her hand on their shoulders and they were just talking towards their car. Ah! Wahala de you. Wahala de. So I watched them when they entered their car and drove off. The woman was just coming back feeling happy. I said, Ekwelema. <laughs> I became very respectful. Ekwele. And then she said something. Brother Pa, she could see money, could see man. Money, I want, I want girls. Have you done the Have you done the Have you done the silver? Yes, we well, have received her. Received. God says she's my wife. He said, eh? God says she's your wife. He said, I will locate their house. I will locate their house for you. Ah! I got home, I cried. What do you think God was trying to say? You don't have any reason to be angry with anybody in church. They didn't come here for you. They, come, they came here for God. So I learned that. She was the one that located their house. Then something happened. She now arranged for us to go and visit. I'm talking about the truth.
because of time, I just want to stop. So when we got to the house, she started by telling, hey, we are from the Stone Church, the day you came. So that's why we came for evangelism. I said, hey, we didn't come here for evangelism. <laughs> don't, don't, don't start my future with a lie. Listen to me, listen to me. Are you hearing me? That, that small lie, that small lie can destroy everything. So I told her, I said, no, we didn't come from, church didn't send us. Church didn't send us. So I said, my dear sister, what's your name? She said, my name is Olufunke. I said, okay, here. The day you came to church, God told me you are my wife. That's what I came to tell you. I don't know how to lie. If it's the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, go and pray. The place became tense. Nobody was saying anything. So I've delivered my message. So the next thing I just said, I said, okay, then let us pray. And I prayed the same thing in my prayer. Father, what you told me, I've told her. <laughs> so I used, I used to joke with my children. I said, they told me and I told her. <laughs> I said, Lord, so you know, I started by telling you that God can never lie. So we left. Two days after, I now got a card. And I wrote on the card. And I sent it through the same woman. But when she got the card, you know, she's an European. She just got angry. Look at these Nigerians. She just threw the card away. He said, she doesn't, he doesn't even know anything about me. He's already sending me love card. Nigerians are just, she was just angry and just ranting and ranting. And she threw the card away. For five days, she didn't even open the card. But on the fifth day, she said she wanted to dress her bed. And the Holy Ghost said, have you even opened the card? Did you open the card? What makes you think that it's a love card? And then she opened the card. It was only one sentence. Thank you for granting us audience into your home. Ah, the Holy Ghost took over from there. <laughs> Thank you for granting us audience into your home. The Holy Ghost began to minister different things to her. This must be a very decent man. This must be ah, a Polish man. This must be... She began to ask questions from the other woman. And ladies and gentlemen, all the questions resulted into the marriage. Are you hearing me? God is already speaking to somebody here. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in Daniel 11.32, they that know their God, they are strong. They that know their God, they are strong. When I began to ask God, so how do I get strength? He said, strength is in the place of knowledge. The more of me you know, the more, the more. And it is this strength that I used to fight my battles. So a few years ago, she was pregnant. And when it was five months, she was very sick with the pregnancy. About nine doctors came together. They looked at the scan. They did everything. Her father, too, is also a surgeon, a renowned surgeon, Dr. Kufuruji. He, too, joined them, making pain. And all of them came together and took a decision that she cannot carry this pregnancy to town. So they need to, well, they use the word, evacuate, or to remove the pregnancy. I'd already given her food around five to six. So I'd already come back home to take care of the other children. But around 8.30, I was just restless. I was just restless. I was, what is going on? What is, there's that, no, no, no GSM now. So I just took the car. I told the children, lock up, put the key by the close to the window. When I come, I will open. And then I drove there. When I got there, one of the doctors said, ah, Mr. Unaji, you are just coming. Well, we just took a decision. Tomorrow, there's going to be an evacuation. Your wife can't continue the pregnancy. It was like a holy anger came upon me. I carried that table. I threw the table upside down. All the paper they wrote, both good and bad, I tore all of them. I began to speak both in Hausa, in Tong, and in Idoma, and everything. And I was telling them, anybody that touched this, my wife, I will kill the person. In fact, I will burn down this. So they went to call the CMD, say, ah, Eli, if I burn down this hospital. I said, I said, yes, I will carry her, I will carry her. And of course, the father, they called the father. 
I said, you, what do you understand about medical science? This is a very important decision. I said, Baba, science, let me more, Jesu. You know your science, I know Jesus. I'm talking about strength. Strength, you, you, you don't understand. Psalm 84, verse 7. Every time you come to church, something is happening. He said, they go from strength to strength, they that appear before God. So coming to church is not ordinary. When you come, give yourself to it. Something is happening. Even the worship, the breeze, like they said, there's a passage. He's doing something in your body. Hey! This was the strength. I went, I said, give me my wife. I carried her, brah, 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 into the car. Took her home. Three days later, they came to tell us about one doctor. He used to be the vice chancellor of UCH here. I mean, uh, UI. They said it's very good. So we went there. The man put all the gadgets and tested her. And then he sent for me. So when I came in, he looked at me. said, I perceive you are a man of God. He knew to be me already. When the kill answer, kill him. What has that got to do with what is here? He said, answer me. I looked at him. I said, you are correct, sir. I'm a servant of God. He said, eh, hey, you mean not so bad. He said, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with your wife. He said, what I just noticed is that there's so much caffeine. He said, do you take coffee? I said, all of us take coffee. In fact, we take coffee every day. Me, I take it like three times a day. He said, eh, hey, it's just caffeine. He said, all she needs to do is flush it out with water. So he, I think he gave us a carton of ragolis that day. I said, water. He said, yeah. I said, water. He said, yes. Okay, no problem. So when we got out, I also bought another three cartons. The Bowali Olua, Elema Flush, Google Cafe, that day. Because I believe and I have faith in this same Jesus, that's the only daughter I have today. That's the only daughter. I, I, I used to imagine if I had just submitted to them, oh, because they are 10 doctors, oh, they know what they are doing. That's how they will have evacuated the baby. Uh, what, what also make, what's the guarantee that she will even be alive? Then they will say, we did our best. So I will lose both the baby and her. Ladies and gentlemen, stand with your God. Stand with your God. Bible said the blessing of the Lord is not coming to give you any sorrow. God will not bless you and then you start crying. Are you hearing me? Then lastly, you know, talking about that strength, do you know that all your battles, you know you said something. You said you know that there was an inner strength. Proverbs 24 verse 10, he said, if you turn back in the day of battle, ah! he said your strength is small. So that means the opposite of that scripture will be, if your strength is much, you will overcome every battle. That's what it means. You will overcome every battle. So what do you need to do? Grow in strength. Grow in strength. And how do you grow in strength? Study the word of God. Study the word of God. And believe. That's why I said, go Rebedo. You need to believe what you need to. You need to release yourself. Praise the Lord. But all these things I'm sharing with you is what has kept me in the kingdom. Because I know where I'm coming from. So I believe this word with all of my heart. I believe it. I believe it. And lastly... I have stayed with this word. I just came across it by accident about 15 years ago. If you are reading your Bible, if you are not careful, you won't see it. Isaiah 49, verse 23c. Isaiah 49, it says, it says the key word there is no one. Everybody say no one. He said, no one put his trust in me and get disappointed. He said, no one ever look up to me. Look at this one. He said, he said, they shall not be put to shame. Who wait for? Who look for? Who hope for? And who expect me to do something? He said, you will never be ashamed. So when things are not happening, it's not God. The question is, are you sure your gaze is on him? Are you sure you are still standing there? Are you sure? I, 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 I love the man of God seriously. And when I read his book, I used to tell people, I said, he's practical. He won't hide the truth. It's not the type that will be pretending. When I read this case, I've read this case of it more than 10 times. In that place, you said something. You said, pain can only be explained by the one that is carrying it. And then you also went somewhere. You said, you said at a point, I even moved the Bible away, self. The pain was so much that you just even don't know what to do again. 
He said, then he said, the Holy Ghost came. The Holy Ghost said, they will cut off this leg. You know, I, I try to visualize as if I'm there. Say, they will cut off this leg. Say, but if you don't want them to cut it, they won't cut it. He said, he said immediately it was like scripture just came in. Then he shouted, get me my Bible! And from there you brought out the cocktail. One of the things that came to me when I read that, he said, Mark 11, verse 24. Whatsoever you say with your mouth. He said, if you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And you did not doubt in your heart. He said, you will have what you say. So the, the Holy Ghost said, but if you don't want them to call, they won't call. So that means he's now up to him to say it. They will not cut this leg. This leg, again, I'll still use it. It's a living testimony of the word of faith that he preaches. It's a living testimony. He said he began to believe. He began to declare. He began to declare. He came back with the cocktail. And even the man that did not believe in God said, eh, what did they call you? He said, Reverend, say something, somebody's hearing you continue. And lo and behold, today, he still has his legs. He still has his legs. Life is a journey. If anybody told me while I was young that life would be full of ups and downs, I probably would not understand. This is to God who is my guide and I owe everything I am and everything I have to Him. In the midst of situations and circumstances I came up against, faith was my companion. My names are Alex. This is my journey of faith and grace. Scars of Faith recalls the journey of the senior pastor, architect Alex Adigwe, and his victorious healing breakthrough. Get your copy today from the bookstand, also available online. Scars of Faith 